this is uh, lecture 7 of this course on uh, analog MOS circuit design. Uh, now uh, in the last uh, few lectures uh, we have talked about uh, the small signal model of uh, NMOS as well as PMOS device. Now in this lecture I will be talking about the construction and the working principle of a MOS amplifier. Now to start with, uh, let me just uh, show you the basic diagram of a MOS amplifier involving an NMOS device, which looks something like that. So this is the MOS device, NMOS, with three terminals, gate, drain and source. Now as you know, this gate source terminal has to be biased proper, properly so that the corresponding channel is created between the drain and source and the current can be propagated accordingly. So what we do is uh, we provide the corresponding bias through a voltage, a DC voltage, let me call this voltage to be V1. And in series with this V1, another time varying signal is applied, which we identified like V in. Now the source terminal is considered to be the common terminal, reference terminal. And we do have a drain resistance in the output side along with another battery over here. So we regard this battery as V2 and this resistance is RT. Now here as you can see if this V is absent because of the application of this V1 this particular gate source voltage of this MOS is equal to V1 and if this V1 is greater than the threshold voltage of the MOS then the channel will be created. So the condition is that V1 should be greater than VTH which is the threshold voltage of the NMOS device. Now under this condition a current will be flowing. So in absence of V in what we have In absence of V in, what we have Vgs that means the gate source voltage is equal to V1 and that is constant because V1 is a constant voltage source over here. So the current that will flow in this particular circuit that is Id which is also constant and if I select the value of V2 in such a way that the device is in the saturation region that means the gate to source voltage minus threshold voltage is greater than I mean uh, gate to source voltage minus threshold voltage is less than the drain to source voltage then uh, we can ensure that the device is in saturation and under this condition the current ID is given by half mu n c ox w by l into V1 minus VTH whole square. Now when this current will flow through this resistance RD, a voltage will be developed across RD with the polarity as shown. So this will be the voltage developed and if I call this voltage to be say VR, then VR is given by ID times RD. And if I consider this voltage, which is nothing but the drain to source voltage VDS, so we find that VDS is given by V2 minus VR, that is V2 minus ID times RT. So this is nothing but V2 minus VR, that is equal to V2 minus ID times RT. 
Now, in absence of any time varying input signal V in, this VDS is constant. This drain source voltage is constant, and what we have, it is something like that. So, if I just plot the same thing as a function of time, VDS, so this will be constant throughout. And that value is given by V2 minus ID times RT. Now suppose uh, this V in is added in series with this V1. And let me consider that uh, the corresponding signal which is present over here is having a shape like this, a sinusoidal signal of certain amplitude and frequency. So this is all about V in. So when V in is added with this V1, then it is going to modulate the gate to source voltage of this MOS device. And when V in goes positive, then the corresponding gate source voltage of this MOS will be increased. And when V in goes negative, then the corresponding gate source voltage will be less than what we have under bias condition. So accordingly, if we just consider the current, this current ID will increase from this particular value half mu and C ox W over L V1 minus Vth whole square when V is greater than 0 and the value of ID will be less than this value when V is less than 0. So accordingly, if we just plot the value of VDS with respect to time, you find that as ID increases, so let me write it down over here, as V in increases, so let me consider this is the ground line. So as V in increases, it implies the gate to source voltage will also increase and which will eventually increase the drain current. Now here I have used the notation that the total instantaneous drain current ID is nothing but I capital D that is the DC current bias current plus the small signal current that is I small d. Similarly, this small v capital GS is nothing but capital V capital GS plus small v small gs. So this is the DC component, first one is the DC component and second one is the time varying component and the summation of these two is the total instantaneous voltage. Now as ID increases over here, so you can also write down the expression for VDS. Similarly, uh, we can write VDS, this voltage to be V2 because this is a constant voltage over here minus small v capital R and that is equal to V2 minus small id into RT. So it is quite apparent as V increases this id will also increase and we suggest that so therefore we can write this small vds will drop down. Similarly if V in goes negative during this part of the graph then the VGS will also reduce which indicates that the ID will be reduced and ultimately this small VDS will increase. So if I have a sinusoidal signal like this at the input side then this, uh, so I should write over here small v capital DS so that it makes sense. So if I write like this small v capital DS and this value is nothing but v DS when uh, the no signal is applied, no time varying signal is applied. And now uh, if the signal v in is applied which varies as a function of time then the corresponding current will also be changed, modulated 
based on this particular equation assuming that the MOS device is there in the saturation region and you know the condition for that and accordingly this drain source total instantaneous voltage will have a shape like this. Now here uh, we have the certain uh, variation of the input signal. So if I just measure this variation, let me consider this variation, this peak to peak variation. Let this variation be represented by delta V in. And here we have certain amount of variation. Now if we measure this particular variation and if this value is equal to say delta V out, then the ratio of these two delta v out upon delta v in is known as the voltage gain of this particular amplifier now in order to have a sufficient value of this voltage gain we have to ensure that uh, this corresponding fluctuation over here the input side must be amplified in the output side so if i want to have a gain value of say 10 then if this fluctuation is given by say 5 millivolt in the input side then the corresponding fluctuation in the output side is given by 5 into 10 that is 50 millivolt. So accordingly we have to design the circuit so that the corresponding amplification can be obtained. Now as far as the notion of amplification is concerned we have to ensure that the corresponding shape of the input signal must be preserved. However as you can see over here the phase has been changed because if the input signal goes positive then the corresponding drain current will also increase over and above the DC current and accordingly this output voltage this drain to source voltage is going to be reduced. So when V in is at its positive peak then this voltage small v capital DS is at its negative peak. So there is a 180 degree phase difference between the input and output but it is not creating any problem as far as our notion of amplification is concerned. So now we are in a position to calculate the magnitude of this uh, particular gain and in order to do that uh, what we need to do is uh, we have to take the help of the small signal model. Uh, so uh, very briefly uh, let me just once again uh, show you the diagram, the circuit diagram of the amplifier which we have considered so far. So this one is the bias voltage V1 then you have a time varying signal V in source is grounded and you have a drain resistance connected between this drain terminal and the supply. So what you normally do just like a PJT amplifier uh, we indicate a positive uh, supply over here and we take the connection like this. So this is RD and this supply uh, is known as the drain supply of VDD. And we are interested in obtaining the output from this particular terminal that is V out. So this is all about the circuit diagram and if you uh, closely observe uh, here we are uh, providing the input at the gate terminal of the device and we are obtaining the output from the drain terminal and everything is measured with respect to the source terminal. So input is applied at the gate, output is obtained at the drain and both the input and the output voltages are measured with respect to the source terminal. So that's why uh, this particular topology is known as common source MOS amplifier, a common source topology, common source topology or common source configuration. Now uh, let us uh, see how does the small signal model of this particular circuit look like. Now uh, we have a MOS device over here, so obviously uh, we do have uh, three terminals, gate, source and drain. So these are the three terminals. So let me call this to be my gate terminal, this is the source terminal S and this one is a drain terminal. Source is grounded. 
Now we didn't get to source, what we have. So if you would like to model the device, so we didn't get to source, we know that particular voltage is given by, let it be VGS. And between drain to source, we have a current source, whose magnitude is given by GM times VGS. Now for the timing, let us forget about the effect of the channel length modulation. That means uh, we are neglecting the value of R0 over here, assuming that R0 is very large. So this is all about the small signal model of the device itself, the MOS itself. What else do we have over here? We have a battery of amplitude V1 and another battery of amplitude VDD or V2. Now since they are constant as far as their variation is concerned with respect to time, so these are represented by simple short circuit. Then what else do we have? We have V in over here and RD. So now uh, we can connect uh, V in. If it is short circuited, then this terminal is connected to the gate. And this terminal is connected to the ground point or I can directly connect it to the source. So this is V in. And we do have a resistance connected between the drain terminal and the positive supply. Now this positive supply in the small signal model is equivalent to AC ground. So uh, this is connected between this resistance RD is connected between drain and the source like this. This one is RD. And we are taking the output from this terminal that is drain terminal. So this is the simplistic model, small signal model. Now from that we have to find out the expression of this V out upon V in. Now you can uh, clearly observe if you just uh, analyze the input side of this particular small signal model, it is quite apparent that V in is equal to VGS. And the current is flowing in this direction. Now whenever we are measuring V out, that is measured with respect to the source terminal. So source is considered to be the reference terminal with respect to measuring V out. So V out is nothing but the drain potential with respect to source. Now here in the output circuit, I see that the current is flowing in this direction from source to drain, not from drain to source. Now if the current flows from drain to source, then this terminal, drain terminal will be much more positive with respect to the source terminal. But here the current is flowing from the source terminal to the drain terminal. So I can write V out like minus GM times VGS times RT. just by following the Ohm's law and which is nothing but minus GM times V in times RD. So from that if we calculate the expression form again then it is nothing but V out upon V in that is equal to minus GM times RD. So that is the expression of gain V out upon V in that is equal to minus GM times RD. Now if we can select the value of RD properly, then uh, we can uh, have a control over the gain. Now we have a minus sign over here, what does it signify? This minus sign signifies that the input signal and the output signal, they differ by an amount of 180 degree in phase. Now in order to uh, increase the voltage gain, what we have, we have two different uh, terms over here like GM and RT. So to increase the voltage gain, voltage gain can be increased either by increasing the value of RD or by increasing the value of GM. So these are the two possible alternatives available to us so that we can increase the voltage gain. I would like to increase the magnitude of the voltage gain. So uh, from this it is quite apparent that mod AV is given by GM times RT. So I would like to make this particular product as high as possible. So two options are available to us. One is to increase RT. Second one is to increase the value of GM. Now let's see what happens if we increase the value of RT. Now if RT is increased, once again uh, let me go back to the, to the previous uh, slide 
Now here it has been written like VDS. VDS is given by V2 minus ID times RD. Now if you increase the value of ID, it implies the VDS will be reduced. Now at the beginning of our discussion, I have mentioned that uh, in order to ensure that the device is in saturation, we have to ensure that the gate source overdrive voltage must be less than the drain source voltage. So here, if I go on increasing the value of RD, then obviously if I go on increasing the value of RD, then also I will be having the same condition for a fixed ID because VDS is given by V2 minus ID times RD. So if either ID or RD is increased in both of these two cases VDS will be reduced. Now what is VDS? That is our output voltage. Now if VDS is reduced and if it is below the gate source voltage minus the threshold voltage, I mean the gate source overdrive voltage, then a point will come when the device enters into the triad region. So therefore, increasing RD to enhance the gain of the amplifier is not a good solution for us. So that's not a good solution. You cannot increase RD indefinitely so that uh, you are increasing the gain of this particular amplifier. You can increase to a certain extent. Then what option available to you? You may increase the value of GM. Now, uh, Already we, are, we have seen uh, different uh, expressions uh, for the mutual conductance or transconductance. So uh, the most familiar expression is something like that. GM is given by mu n c ox w over L into Vgs minus Vth. Or you can also represent this like twice ID divided by VGS minus VTH or this is also equivalent to square root of twice ID mu and C ox W over L. So if I just consider the third equation GM is given by square root of twice ID mu and C ox W over L then GM can be increased. So from this equation, GM can be increased either by increasing the drain current ID or by increasing the W by L ratio because this mu and C ox is a technology dependent parameter. So that is constant. So you can increase GM either by increasing ID or by increasing W by L ratio. Now increasing ID will ultimately turn up to the same problem because if you increase ID then obviously the VDS will drop down and there is a problem that the device might enter into the triad region. So this is not a viable solution. So the only option that is available to you to increase GM is to increase this W by L. But here also you do have a certain limitation. You cannot increase W by L indefinitely or if you go on increasing W by L the value of GM will not be increased accordingly or in other words this particular equation of GM is valid only up to certain range and the maximum value of GM which you, you may have is given by ID upon 1.5 times VT where VT is the thermal voltage that is equal to KT by Q. So you cannot increase W by L indefinitely and the GM will also be increased accordingly. Ultimately the value of GM is governed by this equation and if uh, you operate the device at a particular temperature then the denominator will be constant and ultimately the value of GM is somehow related to the drain current. So there is a certain uh, limitations as far as the enhancement of the gain is concerned. Now in this particular small signal model, we have uh, simply ignored 
the effect of the channel length modulation. Now let us see what happens if we go on uh, incorporating the effect of channel length modulation. Now as you know uh, in order to incorporate the effect of the channel in modulation what you need to do is between drain to source we need to connect the resistance R0 so this is something like that you have a source terminal this is gate this one is source this one is drain now between drain to source already you do have this current source now if this one is given by VGS then this one is GM times VGS apart from that you do have a resistance you do have a resistance which is R0 and then you have the external resistance RT this is the output terminal V out and we are having the input connected at the gate just like this so this is my input signal V in now if you follow the same analogy then you will find once again find that V in is given by VGS and V out this time you have two resistances connected in parallel R0 and RD so V out is nothing but minus GM times VGS times R0 parallel RD. So that is equal to minus GM times V in times R0 parallel RD. Now from that you can evaluate easily the gain, the expression of gain which is nothing but V out upon V in that is equal to minus GM times R0 parallel RT. So without channel length modulation, without considering the effect of channel length modulation, without channel length modulation, what we have is without channel length modulation, what we have the expression of voltage gain is given by minus GM times RT. And with channel length modulation, in that case you have to consider the impact of R0, you can simply make it infinity. With channel length modulation, the expression of voltage gain is coming out to be minus GM times RD in parallel with R0. Now if you have one resistance in isolation and if you connect another resistance, in parallel with the previous one then the effective value of the resistance will be dropped down so what i mean to say is that this rd parallel r0 should be less than rd so if i call this to be av1 and this to be av2 it's quite apparent that av2 is less than av1 now if you want to incorporate the effect of channel and modulation in your calculation then obviously the expression of the voltage gain will be modified and the value of the voltage gain if I just consider the magnitude of the voltage gain that will also be reduced to certain extent. So in the last slide it has already been established that you cannot increase the value of GM at for your wish because there is certain limitation on that and moreover uh, the value of R0 as you know R0 is completely it's a function of so it's given by 1 upon lambda id so lambda is a property of the device itself so R0 can be increased to certain extent by reducing the value of id because uh, it's inversely proportional to id but uh, that will not uh, help you in some of the applications so what is needed so uh, you might think that okay uh, if uh, one of the resistance uh, this external resistance rd if this can be met to be approximated to infinity if it is large enough that value rd then somehow 
uh, we can increase the magnitude of the voltage gain. So that is possible theoretically that okay I may increase the value of RD to certain extent so that the device is in saturation and at the same time the value of the voltage gain is increased. Now here is the problem. Now suppose you have a resistance like this you have a resistance like this connected between two terminals A and B some resistance RT and if you would like to increase the value of RT and if you would like to make it to be infinite then what happens under this extreme condition when RT is equal to infinite or RT approaches infinite then between these two you don't have any explicit resistance so ultimately this is open circuit when RT is equal to infinite or approaches towards infinity. Now here is the problem if RT is equal to infinity and once again if you just uh, closely observe the uh, circuit diagram what we have between these two terminal drain and the supply you have this resistance RD which provides the corresponding bias it is something like that. So this is the drain supply VDD and between the drain supply and the drain the connection is provided by RT. So between these two points if you just uh, consider that RT is so large that it can be approximated to a, an open circuit under this condition the DC current will not flow and the prerequisite condition for having the notion of amplification will be completely lost. However, you have to get rid of this RD in the small signal equivalent circuit. So two requirements and these two requirements are contradictory to each other. One is you have to ensure sufficient bias current between drain and source so that the device is alive and at the same time you have to get rid of the resistance RT. So these are the two requirements and which are contracted to each other. If you get rid, if you want to get rid of uh, this RD drain resistance, then obviously sufficient bias current will not be flown between the drain and source. So device cannot work properly. And on the other hand, if you keep the RD over here between the drain and the supply, then obviously the lower value of RD will limit the gain of the particular amplifier. It will limit the voltage gain. So you have to find out the solution so that the gain can be increased so to certain extent and at the same time you have the corresponding bias current between the drain and source. So the solution is so let me just uh, once again let me just change the color. So you have a resistance like this you have a resistance like this between two terminal A and B this resistance is RD now you have to ensure sufficient current between A and B 
and at the same time get rid of rd in small signal equivalent circuit so these two conditions can only be satisfied if you realize this rd by means of if you substitute this one by means of a dc current source connected between these two terminal a and b so this is a dc current source let it be id a constant current source constant current source now had this been the case then it will provide a constant current bias current between a to b so that the device operates properly and as far as our discussion goes in some previous lectures it has been mentioned that if you have a constant current source in the actual circuit then the then in the corresponding small signal equivalent model this is simply substituted by an open circuit we have mentioned that if we have a constant voltage source like a battery then this is substituted by a simple short circuit and if you have a constant current source then ultimately this is substituted by an open circuit in the small signal equivalent model so with this what we have our ultimate structure of the amplifier will look something like that so the source is grounded bias is given at the gate by means of a battery say v1 this is the input signal v in which is added in series with this v1 and this is the drain supply vdd and between the drain supply and the drain we don't have an explicit resistance rather what we have we have a current source connected between these two points this is a constant current source so i may call like id0 a constant current source and i'll be taking the output from this terminal which is p out now if you uh, want to draw the small signal equivalent model how does it look like in the small signal between these two you have a vgs assuming this to be my gate terminal this to be my source terminal and source is grounded between drain to source you do have gm vgs because this is the property of the mos itself and this is not a small thing this is not a constant current source the amplitude of this current source varies with respect to the input signal applied over here then uh, you have r not which is also the property of the mos device itself now what about this id not which was connected between the drain terminal and the vdd power supply so this id not will not appear in the small signal equivalent model because it is a constant current source so you don't have anything between drain and source so this is the drain terminal you don't have anything between these two and this is the output node v out and we need to connect the input signal over here at the input side v in okay so uh, the same uh, calculation reveals that v in is equal to vgs by analyzing the input circuit and now v out is given by minus gm times vgs times r not and that is equal to minus gm times v in times r not so from that we can find out the expression of the voltage gain av that is equal to v out upon v in that is given by 
minus gm times r naught. So as far as the magnitude of the voltage gain is concerned, this mod AV is given by gm times r naught. Now if you have an explicit resistance over here, then it will be gm times rd without incorporating the effect of r naught. If you just forget about the channel in modulation, then it will be simply gm times rd. Now if you just incorporate the channel in modulation, then obviously it will be gm times rd parallel r naught and which is less than gm times rt. And if you represent this resistance between the drain and the power supply by means of a current source like this, then what we have is the corresponding expression for the voltage gain is reduced to gm r0. And remember the value of r0 is typically large for a MOS device. So for in many applications, we can simply get rid of R0 connected between drain and source, assuming that it is very large in the range of few hundreds of kilo ohms or even larger. And that is the property of the MOS device itself. Because as you know, the value of lambda is very small, like 0.2 under 0.2 and uh, the corresponding drain current, if it is in the range of microampere, then you can uh, simply identify what about the value of R0. The typical value of R0 is very large in the range of few tens or hundreds of kilo ohms. So for approximate calculation, you can get rid of that. But for actual calculation, you have to include the impact of R0. And this value of R0 is normally large with respect to Rd. Now if explicit Rd is there between drain terminal and the power supply line, then what happens is the overall gain will be reduced because this, this time you don't have gm times r0 rather you have gm times rd parallel r0 and this one will be much much less. So what I mean to say is out of these three so let me just uh, mark it over here. Uh, let me take a different color, yes. So gm times r0, this value is greater than gm times rd typically because the value of rd is small as compared to r0 unless you take a very large value of resistance and it is very difficult to implement or design this large resistance on an integrated circuit chip. So it is very difficult to design a very large value of rd which exceeds R0 and this is greater than gm times rd parallel R0. So already uh, we have encountered three different expressions for the voltage gain. In fact the magnitude of the voltage gain I am talking about gm R0, gm rd and gm rd parallel R0. So out of these three this one is the highest gm R0 and that can be obtained if I represent or if I design the amplifier in such a way that this particular resistance is being represented by means of a current source. Now in some later uh, modules we will also be discussing about how we can represent this current source in an integrated circuit model because ultimately we cannot have some discrete current source connected between this drain terminal and the supply line. Rather, we have to represent this current source by means of a MOS device because you know this MOS can be realized either NMOS or PMOS can be realized as a current source whenever it is operated in the saturation region. So once again, uh, we will also discuss how we can represent uh, this particular current source by means of a MOS device and accordingly we can derive the expression of the voltage gain by incorporating the different parameters of that MOS device as well. Now with this uh, I would like to uh, conclude our preliminary and the first lecture on the design of a common source MOS amplifier circuit.